Well, we're l better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. You know what's what's so bad about never? What's so bad about never? You never get to try again. Well, never means that you never know what it was going to be like. Yeah. You've been doing all this preparation, all this work to try to get it ready, and it never happens. Mm. Oi. <laughs> and you don't know whether it would have been good, bad, or indifferent because you just didn't cooperate. Yeah. But praise God, we're here tonight. Yes, very close to the hour of sunset. Yahweh has called and chosen us and, and missioned us. Mm -hmm. He's given us a mission. Mm -hmm. And that mission is to wake the world up to his holy days. Yes. So if you're watching this, the Bible says, where two or more are gathered in my name there, I will be with you in their midst. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about whether you're pleasing Yahweh or not. You know? Um, I'm going to get a teaching for tonight that I think God has ordained for this moment. Amen. And so we're going to press forward and see what he does. It's his, it's his holy day. Mm -hmm. He said, these holy days belong to me, not to Israel, not to the Christians, not to the Muslims, not to the uh, Jehovah's Witness or the whatever, Mormons. No, they belong to Yahweh. And he's called us to come together on these days and to celebrate them and rehearse the, the days that are coming, to re practice and rehearse what the Holy Day foretells. Yes. So we're going to get into a little Bible study here, and I'm going to ask questions and ask all of you to kind of kick in your thoughts as we try to get to the bottom of this awesome, awesome, uh, great and final day as a tribute unto Yahweh. Amen. Amen. So we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. God's good. Amen. Amen. This is the first verse of the Torah Parsha for tonight. Asar te asar. Asar te asar. Tithe, you shall tithe. It's not a suggestion. It is a direct commandment. Asar te asar it kol. Kol means all or every. Tavuat. Uh, all or every of the increases of the zarechai of your seed, hayotzei, that he brings forth, hasade from the field, shana, shana, year by year. So we are going to take a look at tithing and what God thinks of it, what he means by it, uh, when we tithe to him, that is a sign of our faith. And as he sees us operate in faith, that's a good thing. And I'll, I'll explain why here shortly. The achalta, and you shall eat. This is a Vav conversi with the pronoun you at the end of the word, so that means that you will eat, but the vav conversive, no, you have eaten, is with the pronoun at the end. So the vav conversive with the vav in the beginning of the word flips the tense of the verb. So it says, and you will, you shall eat before Yahweh your God in the place which he shall choose to dwell or place his name there. Ma'asur, uh, the tithe of Daganka, your corn or your, your um, 
product that's growing in the field, like the wheat or the barley or whatever your crop might be. Um, Tiroshika, Yerosh is, um, is wine. Uh, it can either be fermented or not. And your flocks of, of sheep to the end that you may learn. Lamad means literally to, to study or know, to learn. To fear. Lirat. Lira. To fear. To fear. Et Yahweh Elohecha, your God all of the of the two days all of the two days <laughs> let me bring that up here for you that is so powerful uh, and my screen is not following me Well, it's not following me, so we'll just leave it here for a few minutes and just talk about it. But the, um, the last two words in verse 23 says, Kol Hayamin. Mm -hmm. Kol of the all or every of the two days. <laughs> Let me check if you're on the right network. Let's see if I'm on the right network. He had, I was on the right network because it's up there. Yeah. Is it supposed to end with 0124? No. It's broadcast. All right, then I will correct that. And I don't see broadcast uh, on the list. Oh, there it is, popped up on the top. Okay, see if you got 23, uh, the, the last two words in verse 23. Okay, thaw out wire cast. Okay, that's what I'm working on now. And that should get it. Okay, I want to explain something to you about Hebrew words and their uh, nature of time, the nature of time. Um, Kol Hamim. It's got it up there, but it's doing something funny. And it ain't ha-ha funny. Well, I'm going to go over here and make sure that it's still connected. No, it switched. Check to see if broadcast is actually on and working. Microsoft. It says it's connected now. We'll see if it stays connected. Oh, you do? Yeah, I see. All righty. 
Well, hallelujah. Okay, see the um, highlighted section? Call mm -hmm. Hayamim. Every this year. <laughs> Every this year. Let me show you what I'm talking about now with my uh, little marker pen. Okay, Let's see if this thing's working. Yeah, look at that. It is. Okay. Let's take first, uh, this is the word. Yom. It's got a poem up there at the top. Yom. Okay. Now, when you take a time-based word, yom is a time-based word. It's it's a it's a one day, a, a a typically one day. If you change it to high yom. Usually what happens is this letter gets dropped. It's dropped. Um, sometimes it's not, I guess. But anyway, um, anyway, we have Hayom. Now, that changes it from a day to today, this day, the current day, okay, just by putting ha in front of it, oh, well, come on, right here, putting the, uh, the direct object ha in front of yom changes it from a day to today, this day. If it's talking about hours, then it's going to change it from hour to this hour. If it's talking about a, um, a year, Hashanah would be this year. This year. Hashanah, uh, Haba would be this year that is coming. In other words, next year. Okay? So the ha in front of time-based words uh, always turns it into today or this time period that we're in. But if we... What if we do this? Uh, What would that become? Okay, first let's go ahead and get rid of this hay up here because we just want to take it on a progression. So, yomim, what would that be? It's a yomim would be multiple years. We don't say how many. We don't know how many because it's not stated. To infinity and beyond. Yeah. Well, it could be, but it might not be. So, yomim means for years, and if it's got a number in front of it, then that will be the limiting factor. 40 years, 50 years, 2 years. Um, and if it's got no number in front of it, 
then you put the direct object again in front of it so this will become hi yo meme now that doesn't work too well in english but in hebrew it means year by year so you're going to be doing this without restrictions so it's a forever kind of a command all right so we have hayamim hayomim excuse me hayomim uh, tells us that it's going to be an ongoing never-ending process so and especially when it has coal in front of it now it's every of uh, okay so hayom would be this year hayamim would be all would be uh this year plural and kol hayamim that means literally it's going to be every year by year year by year year by year never ending so this is a very powerful statement that it doesn't say, well, until the Messiah comes. That's not, it doesn't say that. But it says every of your years on the current year, you're to tithe. That's the understanding of this uh, structure of this sentence here. Now I'm going to get rid of this again, and I want to bring the Bible up. And I want to bring it up so you can see that in the sentence, in the verse, <clears throat> the achalta, and you shall eat, lifne Yahweh, before Yahweh your God, by makom, in the place, ashir yivchar, uh, lishchan, where he shall choose to place Shmo, his name. Sham will be there. That's where he places his name. Uh, Ma Asar, the tithe of Daganka, of your corn or your, your grains. Tiroshka, of your wine or your. Uh, it doesn't specify whether it's uh, fermented or not fermented. It's, it's uh, not related that way. And then, if it was yayin, then it would be fermented. But it's not yayin. It's, um, it's uh, tiroshka of your, you could say grape juice. doesn't say whether it's fermented or not. Uh, and of your oil, and the firstlings of your herds, of your flocks, to the end, in order to, in other words, teal uh, mud, to to that you may learn la ria lira to fear. Et Yahweh Elohecha, your God, Kol Hayamim. In all of your present days, this isn't something you hope for. This is a this is a living in the moment kind of a statement. Yeah. That when I first started trusting the Lord with everything, mm -hmm. I couldn't do that forever. I knew I couldn't. So I told him, Lord, I can do this for today, but I can't promise tomorrow. But for today, everything I have belongs to you. And I did that for probably a couple of years before I was able to say, okay, Lord, I know I can now do this. I'm going to give it to you, and I'm not going to take it back. And so... At that point, I was able to be really honest with God and say, 
I can do this, and I'm planning to do it. And if I fail, please forgive me, but my plans are to give my life and all of my well-being to you. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> I was living in the day, Hayom. Mm-hmm. I couldn't live in tomorrow at the beginning of it. Mm-hmm. But then it changed to Hayamim, and it was also preceded by Kol Hayamim. Every, every day I'm going to live in this moment. So my, these, this moment is extending itself now to all of them. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Now if you go, uh, and he says if the way's too long for you, then you can change it for money and buy it what you want when you get, get there. Um, So anyway, that's the way uh, time wor- time-based words work in Hebrew. And, you know, how would you say now in Akshav. Hebrew? Good. Akshav. Akshav means Akshav. now. Akshav. Akshav. Exactly. Thank you, Fina. You're welcome. So all of, well, I knew that already, but I was just, Trying to stroke your ego a little bit too, you know, because it's been a while since I've said it. So. Yeah, but you hadn't said it in a long time, so I wasn't sure you'd remember. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so Akshav is now, and that's how it's always translated. So there is a word for now. So why do you think that God would say Kol Hayamim? Well, it's uh, just, it's more, more. it's more uh, all-consuming, all-inclusive. So that all of your, all of your current days will then be uh, for the Lord. Right. You might not think, well, I don't know if I can promise God that. Well, he understands that. He's got a way around it for you. So, you've lost me. I'm sorry. Hmm. I'm right here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's uh, the problem? Okay, so... How, how does it... How does it translate to... Allow... It to be broad rather than Pacific? In this general case, in the context... Well, it's just a little more... More tightly understood... Because Hayamim means uh, day, day by day by day by day. Okay. But when you put the coal in front of it, it really nails it down. Oh. That he wants you to live this way every day in the present, giving it to God. Uh. And that you'll eat from your grains, from your flocks, from your uh, uh, herds. And it's so that you may learn to fear Yahweh. Now, what kind of fear is it going to be if year after year after year you are giving it all, the increase of your field and the tithing of it year by year, by year by year, by year by year, to God? Will that be a learning situation where you begin to really trust him? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the intention. Because you are trusting him is going to be so rock solid, there aren't any options for you. Amen. Okay, I want everybody's uh, heads up in here because I'm fixing to go into what I wanted to tell them this morning. Okay. Y'all pray that I'll be able to put it together properly so they can get it. Okay. Delve deeper in it than ever before. What if you come to a place where you have nothing to give to God? That's 
His mercy. That all your earthly possessions have. You give of yourself. Right. You give of yourself with your time. But let's think. Let's don't go too fast here. Uh, why does that mean that you don't have anything to give? Yeah, or of of goods. Yeah, produce. Mm -hmm. And what happens if you decide you want to give more, but you have nothing more to give? You can then turn it and say, well, I'm going to give of my time to God. We've always got more time. Well, whatever time he blesses us with. Mm -hmm. no so we can take... Out. We can take our time then and give it to God. And I've seen some people that have done that and they've gotten kind of angry over it because they feel like God was letting them down. But they didn't. They weren't really being blessed with what God promised that we would be blessed with. Well, but there's a increase of your flocks, increase of your herds, increase of your field. Uh, and so they get irritated and they start fuming on it. Well, okay. but doesn't there, didn't we just cover recently scripture where we are to amend, we just came from Yom Kippur, though. We are to amend wrongs we've done to others, leave our... Okay, let's don't go too far with that because I'm not done yet. Okay, I'm sorry. That's all right. I thought that's what you were going I'm sorry. Now... So you want to give a bigger gift to God, but you have nothing more you can give. What the Lord showed me is that you are in a position to give him the greatest gift that he could ever hope to receive from you. And that is? Your love. <laughs> Your love. If you had a child and the child was so busy trying to please you and serve you, you would be very appreciative of that. But it's only when that child has come to the end of his ability to give to you that you begin to see the real nature of his heart for you. Because he wants to increase his giving to you so much that he's willing to sacrifice his own hopes and joys for things that he had hoped for in order to bless you. Amen. Becoming aware of the fact how much you love your child, he wants to give back to you the same way that you have been giving to him, but he doesn't have the resources to do that. So by giving his love to you, he is declaring it loudly his love and that's the greatest blessing we can give God mm -hmm. is our love back to him mm -hmm. and I've had people come up to me and say they wanted to give me this and give me that so I can do this thing for God and if I accepted what they had for me it would cheat me out of being able to show God how much I love him. How? Because God loves the cheerful giver. He loves the one who is strictly obedient to his instructions and not willing to budge an inch uh, for anything. Even if he runs out of money, even if he gets sick, whatever happens, he's determined to give God what he has promised. And so that becomes a sacrificial uh, order of giving that goes way beyond the actual deed. Now, God is sitting there watching Shane and Olivia eating their food on the edge of the cliff. <laughs> Wondering if there's going to be money for the next next meal. And that is the highest order of sacrifice. Because you have done it regardless of the outcome. You're not, 
You're not conditionally saying, okay, I'll, I'll tie it to you, conditional upon you're giving me more, conditional on you giving me a better job, a better house, a better car, a better whatever. And so because of that, it becomes an unconditional sacrifice that you're given to God. And he likes that. When Daniel was praying and the king issued the edict that anyone caught praying to any other god or power that be other than the king <coughs> was going to be thrown to the lion's den. Daniel knew what that meant. And he chose to give God himself in total anyway, knowing that it could be dictating when his last days on this earth will be. <coughs> and because of that, God was able to use him. Joseph trusted God. He gave that message to the uh, baker and the wine server. And because he was unafraid to do that, he did not fear losing his life over it. God counted as a worthy sacrifice. And then he was picked by Pharaoh to be in the high position of the governor of the land where the Pharaoh himself would even be obedient to Pharaoh, to, to Joseph. So he, fi he didn't fear what Pharaoh was going to do to him. And so God blessed him with the highest position in the land, actually. And even Pharaoh obeyed Joseph. He wouldn't even use his own authority or glory in order to surpass Joseph's instructions. Now, that's why Joseph was given that great position and, and work to do, is because he was willing to sacrifice his very own life in order to serve Yahweh. And that got Yahweh's attention. We have Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, the, um, uh, the three Jewish boys that were thrown into the furnace. And we see that they did not try to circumvent their own lives for God. They said out of their mouths, uh, God is able to deliver us from this, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow to the king. Amen. And so what happened? They stoked the fire up so hot that it killed the soldiers throwing the wood on the fire. And these three Jewish boys were thrown into that furnace and it burned the ropes off of their hands and they didn't come out with a singed hair on their body. And it's because they were so willing to give up their lives for God that he chose them for that awesome and glorious place of giving an example of walking in faith. Um, I told our threesome that were gathered this morning that I have something that I wanted to share with him. And that is that there are many things that God has told me to do and there are many things that he hasn't told me to do. One of the things he told me to do was I am to, get it, I am to give up my job and I'm not supposed to go looking for work. So, that's, that's a tough decision for me. But I did it. And I said, it's all yours. And as I, as I walked that, my resolve to be obedient was stronger and stronger. That I was not going to allow anything, including loss of my own life, to interfere with my commitment to God in this matter. And so when someone came up and said, there's a place where you can get help for your finances for the month. And I said, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. 
because I've been trusting Yahweh. That's my walk. That's my life. My actions say I trust Yahweh. And if I turn to man to answer my problem, doesn't that diminish my faith and trust in Yahweh? So I told them I can't do that. God would probably allow it. But if I seek after answers from men, that's going to steal from me my ability to show God how much I love him. So I chose not to do that. And that's what I wanted to show you. That, that is what... Here we are at the very last of the Feast of Tabernacles, right? The last day of assembly, the eighth day of assembly. Yeah. And now we get offered a little incentive to go turn back to men. What are we going to do? Are we going to turn back to men or are we going to continue our complete and total resolve to trust Yahweh? And if I trust Yahweh, what's Yahweh going to think of that? I would have given up my right to have a greater gift to give to Yahweh as a result of that if I had taken man's answer. You see what I'm saying? This is, this is kind of all tied together and it's producing a, a uh, situation that allows me to give a greater gift to God than I've ever given before. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And so my resolve is to continue to be a godly man, a man whose resolve is to be obedient to the minutest detail to Almighty God, our Creator. And that is why we've heard reports of how God has defended me yes. in the eyes of the world around us. Mm -hmm. Because he likes what I'm doing. Yes. So far I have not looked for a job or work. Sometimes I've asked him, do you want me to go look for a job now? No. Okay. What am I going to do? I'm going to obey him. And sometimes it means that I just have to do without when I think that God would do something for me. And if, and if he doesn't, I'm still going to do what I think is, is honorable to him. I'm going to fear God, not man. Why would I feel, fear man? <laughs> I don't trust man, frankly. You can't show me a man on this planet that's more trustworthy than Almighty Yahweh. So I'm not going to take that chance. I'm going to stay with God. I'm going to stand, be obedient. And so when somebody said they were praying against our finances, uh, that we would be cursed, I said, what finances? Oh, I don't. I don't have and I will never have finances. They belong to God. And if he chooses to entrust me with some of that, I only pray that I will do the right things that he wants me to do with it. Amen. And how could he trust me otherwise if I didn't do that? So these people that are given the the laughable curse against us and our finances because they don't like what we're doing. That's nothing compared to the greatness of our God. Amen. And I trust him with arms and limbs and even my own heart and life and well-being. I was uh, having diabetic symptoms and I was going to a doctor and taking medication. 
And when I prayed about it, I said, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. Tell me what to do. He said, flush the medicine and don't go back to that doctor. Well, Lord, there's a lot of serious side effects from diabetics. I don't want to have failed kidneys or have a leg amputated or whatever. I don't want any of that. So I'm asking you to keep all these things for me so I can better serve you. And I stopped going to the doctor and I haven't been back. And I don't plan to go back. And I thought, you know, even if something happens that looks like I'm going to lose a leg or whatever, or kidneys or failures, whatever, I'm not going to go back to trusting in man. Why should I? Why should I go back to trusting in men? Because men are not trustworthy. So I have resolved once again to be completely and totally and utterly faithful to a God who is trustworthy and honorable. And I know that even if the report comes from a doctor that I'm going to get my foot amputated or whatever, that doctor doesn't know everything. And they've made mistakes, a lot of serious mistakes in the past with people. I don't want them to make a mistake on me. I want God to make it the way he wants it to be, and I'm going to trust him with that. Amen. And so that's where I'm at in my walk with him. I have learned Teal Mod up here on the screen. Bring the Bible back up. Bring the Bible back up. What? Look at the whole computer froze? Yeah. Well, that's just a stupid adversary. Yeah. He doesn't know anything anyway. <laughs> Are we still recording? Yes. We'll praise the Lord for that. Yep. Yeah. Did anybody get anything out of this? Yes. Yeah, they threw the three boys into the fiery furnace. <laughs> Did it kill them? <laughs> no. Did it kill them? No. no. They didn't even think about their death. Just... No, they said even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow to that king. So we have to be just as determined, doggedly determined to serve Yahweh regardless. If I lose a, lie, a leg over it, so what? God doesn't think I need it. He can have it. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. And if I need to go for dialysis, which I don't believe that's going to happen, but if it does, he is able to rescue me from the dialysis. And if he doesn't, then I trust him anyway to do what is right. He is faithful. Well, that's my little teaching for tonight. Yes, ma'am? I uh, was just thinking about the two events when uh, Israel and God was with them and they were going into battle, that they were able to prevail and succeed and win, win the battle. And then there was another time, another battle came about, and they got all excited and, you know, fought with their own might. And uh, it was informed to them, with, God is not with you. And they went ahead and stubbornly went forth. Exactly. Wow. And, and so I, I see that as we're in, in which, what you're speaking of, there is an um, initial <laughs> obedience to Yahweh. And we need to be clear in our heart and our mind that we're not acting our, by our own strength and our own wisdom and knowledge. Well, this morning, when I 
I was watching a program that was dealing with trusting and uh, being uh, faithful. I don't hear my mic. Am I still on? Okay. So I, I just, uh, I just was questioning, Lord, am I acting in pride by doing what you say, or am I actually operating in faith? Sometimes that's very hard to discern for an individual. Indeed. So if I'm operating in pride, I might be doing the wildest, stupidest, craziest thing I could do and end up dying in the process. Mm -hmm. But if I'm operating according to his instructions of standing in faith and solidly believing him, right. then I can trust him for the outcome. And, and that's what I've yeah. been doing over the past many, many years. Yeah. And so it's true Kings may have the authority to kill you. Like Daniel and Hananiah and Mishael and Azariah, the three Jewish boys in the furnace. So, yeah, they got thrown into the furnace. Did they die? No. no. Did they learn to trust Yahweh through it? Yeah. Look at that. Bring the Bible back up. I don't know if you can do it or not, but it looks like it's not frozen anymore. We might want to get us a blowtorch in there and then thaw that machine. <laughs> well, I don't think it's so much the machine as the internet. This happens when they Right. Internet. There we go. Tal teal mod. Teal mod means literally you may learn. You will learn. Since the pronoun you comes at the very beginning of the word, let me see if it'll follow me. Next, when you have a moment, we could expand that Hebrew word of fear to fear. That would be, because I find the, those combination of letters very right. interesting. There's a lot more meaning to it than just to fear. Right. But here we see teal mud. Yeah. Lamed means study or learn. What happens if you put the pronoun in front of the word? It makes it an adjective? No, it makes it a, uh, an, an incompleted. You okay. haven't learned yet, but you will learn. Okay. So that you may learn. And that is proper translation there because yeah. the pronoun you, which is the T part of that verb, uh, that is you, the pronoun. So that puts this thing in an incompleted state. Right. And so we will learn by obeying the instructions that God has given us. We will learn to trust him. That is fear, mm -hmm. to trust him. Fear is a higher form of faith it wouldn't seem that way to our, our human minds. But fear is an absolute form of trust. Someone who is in fear that the devil is going to hurt them has the highest level of trust in the devil. And they'll get what they are believing for. But if you are fearing Yahweh, then you're going to get what Yahweh's believing for. For you so that it says here that you may uh, learn Liro Lira Lira means literally to fear it yeah. Yahweh your God so if you are fearing Yahweh then you're going to be obedient to him are we going to that word to Sure. Sure. Bring back up. Okay. There we go. Yare. 
a primitive verb, to fear, mortally to revere, cause to frighten. Okay. There we go. That did come up after after a while, didn't it? <laughs> so, what? It, let's look at the context again. What's the primary thing that most people fear? First of all, let's go back to the beginning of 22. Well, if I was to take public speaking. <laughs> what do people fear? You're afraid somebody might not like what you're saying, right? <laughs> I got over that a long time ago. <laughs> So verse 22 again, it says, Aser to Aser. Aser means tithe. When you double it, it becomes an imprecatory. It's, in, it, you, it's mandatory. You don't get an option. This in, in this case, it says tithe, you tithe. And it becomes very... Um, explicatively a action that must not be uh, overlooked. You're going to tithe it. Now, it's not natural for human beings to want to tithe. You're giving away 10% of your, your money that you've earned, you know, and putting it in a, a special bank account. Well, it's more than that because I've been tithing from my net, not my gross. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> aser to aser, you shall tithe all of the tabuat of the increase of your um, zara means seed, zare means uh, your seed from the fr from the field. So if, you, if you're growing barley or rice or wheat or whatever it is, that's what you're going to get an increase on, and that's what you are supposed to tithe, is the increase. And it says, Hayotze, and Yotze means he brings forth. Hayotze is causatively. Who's going to bring it forth? Well, we're believing that Yahweh will bring it forth for us. Uh, from the field. And then it says Shana, Shana, which is really telling us something where you've got a choice. You can skip out some years. No, you have to do it year by year. And year by year, I, I had a guy that told me this is that the tithe was really only supposed to be taken every third year. And I said, what are you talking about? Haven't you read the scripture that says you're supposed to be tithing year by year? Yeah. And he says, where is it? And so I looked it up in scripture, and here it is right here, Deuteronomy 14.22. That doesn't mean you do it once every three years. You do it every year. Every year, yeah, year by year. That's the third tithe, and that's something a lot of other people are just like, ah. Okay, but this third tithe is called the year of tithing yeah. because you give an extra third. Right. You know, you give an extra 10% uh, beyond and above your first and second tithe. You have to give a third tithe uh, to those who are less fortunate, widows and orphans and, and uh, strangers that are in the land. And it's because they have no fields to work. And so the only food that they're going to get to eat is what you give in that third year of tithing. And so those people have a problem with just one tithe. Right. And then you tell them, oh, well, there's a second tithe. Oh, I'm not giving no second tithe. <laughs> you know. I had one guy talk, get in my face and said, I tried tithing once, it didn't work. I said, well, I tried lifting weights once and it didn't work either. <laughs> you know. I mean, that's a fact. But you cannot 
be receiving blessings from God uh, and live in a constant state of doubt. It's just not going to work. You have to believe God's word, have a basis for trusting. And that's why Hebrews says that after you've done the will of God, then the blessings that are promised in God's word will come. And it's very clear when you study it in context that that's what it's talking about, that blessings will come. He who is coming will come. That's not talking about Yeshua there. It's talking about the blessings that God has promised us for our obedience. And it's very clear if you hold close to it and look at the context, there's no way you can get anything else out of it except that the blessings will come. And God's promised blessings. That's why we can trust his word. We can look at that another time if you'd like. I've done it before in our classes. But now, so you are truly to tithe all of the increase of your seed that comes forth from the field year by year. There's no doubt, no room for anything else in all that. Uh, and then it says in verse 23, you shall eat <coughs> a halta. A chal means literally consume. You shall eat. How many tithes are you going to be eating? Are, do you get to eat the first tithe? No. No, that belongs to the Levites and the Cohens, the priesthood. So the second tithe is the one that we can eat. It's the second tithe, and it's used specifically to enable you to go and keep the Feast of Tabernacles and all of the holy days. And this is one of the holy days that we're in today. And, it's, and we are to eat it, the tithe, before the Lord. And so this is a different tithe than the one that goes for the upkeep of the temple and the priesthood. And so this is clearly a second tithe. And that tithe is what we are to eat in the place. Bamakom, a share. A share means which. In the place which Yivchar. Yivchar literally means he shall choose. And I translated it correctly here. Le Shekhan, to rest his name. Shmo means literally his name. Sham means there. He's going to rest his name there. Having trouble with my finger, he doesn't want to write right. Uh, and then it says, Ma'aser, Ma'asar, Dagankha, of your, the tithe of your corn, of your wine, or juice, if you will. Uh, of the oil, the firstlings of your herds, the flocks that you may, that you may learn. Lomed means literally to study or learn that you shall, in the future, you shall learn. Uh, lira, to fear. Et, it's the sign of the direct object that's going to tell you you're supposed to fear. Yahweh, your God. You have to learn to fear Yahweh, your God. Kol, Hayamim, and we talked about that. Kol means all or every. Hayamim uh, is of the days, and the indication of this is that it's a forever statement. You're not going to be in and out, in and out, but you're going to learn to fear God in every one of the days that you live on planet Earth. He told me not to look for a job. I haven't looked for a job. But many are the days that I ask him if he's changed his mind yet. <laughs> or a business. Start a business. Can't start a business. Can't. He gave me a, a company that I was to use for his purposes, and he, he clearly defined it. But I don't get to be the owner. 
God's the owner. And if the way is too far for you, you're able to convert it to cash and buy your uh, food that you're going to eat there wherever he established his name. And then he says, you'll turn it into money and bind up the money in your hand and you shall go into the place which God chose, which Yahweh your God chose. Uh, Bo means in him, that he's chosen, that it's his choice. And verse 26, Venata, Venatata, Nata is a shortened form of the word Natan, and it literally means uh, to give. To give. But here, if you'll notice, we have a we have a a uh, doggish point in that in that consonant in that letter, the letter Tav. And what does that tell us? Do you know? That doggish point is indicative of a, it's called a doggish forte. It's a strong doggish point. And it means that there has been a letter in the root that was absorbed. And so what letter would that be? It will be the nun. I'll show you. Here you see the Natan. It's got the first nun, tav, final nun, and then it's got the final nun has been absorbed because it's a weak consonant. And so a yud or nun, either one, can be absorbed by another letter. Also an olive can be absorbed by a letter. There are a number of soft consonants that can be absorbed if they're if they can be swallowed up, in other words, by uh, a, another letter that's placed preceding them. Contraction. Well, hmm? Like a contraction? Like a contraction? Um, kind of, yeah. But... I find it amusing that that literally spells Nathan. Uh-huh, Nathan. There's a couple of clients named Nathan, so I'll remember... And that. if their name is Nathanel, it means <laughs> God has given. So anyway, so if you are going on a long trip, you have to convert it to money, and that money you shall bestow or give that money bakol in every which, or they translate it here for whatsoever. Some things are a little hard to translate into English. Uh, Ta'ave. Ava. It's a primitive root, and it means that you wish for, you lust for, you desire, covet. So, whatever you have that you're craving or desiring, that you're nephesh, remember what we said about nephesh? Nephesh is of what? I see you shaking your head, but you're having a hard time putting words in it, aren't you? Okay. The place of desire, the place of desire, the place of... Yeah, it's, it's a uh, indication of something that has a craving to it. Right. It's a natural craving from, that, from the soul, nephesh. When God breathed into man, he became a living soul. A living being that craves is the understanding of it. When he breathed into the animals, he gave them life. They became a living soul, a natural soul that craves. And you can watch lion, lions and tigers and all out in the wild, and you can see them um, manifest those cravings. 
So if they get hungry, what are they going to do? They're going to go kill that rabbit, kill that dog, kill that man, kill whatever in order to satisfy his soul's desire. And it's real interesting that most animals are not as ruthless as man portrays them to be. It's only when they have learned to kill human beings that they uh, become more ruthless towards us. But the natural state of like a cougar or a leopard or a lion. Or a shark. They don't, they don't want to kill men. In fact, they'd rather not have anything to do with men. But there are a number of stories that I've seen, some on the internet with Facebook and some with personal stories that people have told me they personally experienced, where a cougar or a lion or a uh, cheetah or whatever, uh, they uh, become very protective of men when they're being attacked by other animals. Unless the man becomes very aggressive towards them, they are not interested in harming the man. But there have been cases where the wild animals have taken human um, offspring, children, and raised them. And even brought them back to the parents, ultimately. Um, there was a young child that was uh, raised by a lion and the lion tracked down where the, uh, where the parents live by smell because the family has a certain smell to it they can find. And they brought the child with them and this was like for several months they fed this child. And so they brought this child home and the parents saw this lion walking with the child back to their house and they couldn't believe it because it was being brought home. And then uh, they took the child into the house and the lion just stood out back watching to see what would happen. And there were some other wild animals coming to attack them and the lions drove them off. Drove them off, come back and stood their position. And I think that is so cool because the natural state of the wild animals is to revere man but not to get mixed up with them. They'd rather not have anything to do with them but certainly they're not going to let bad things happen to a man child. They just don't. It's a natural way of being. I'm surprised that people haven't discovered this by now. I mean it's just, it's just the way th things are in the wild. Um, so anyway, whatever we desire, we lust after for oxen or sheep or wine or strong drink or whatsoever, uh, or for whatsoever, um, uh, tisha, tisha al. And that's really, let me open up tisha al here and just check it out. Tisha al to inquire or request, by extension, to demand. So whatever we have that we want to ask for, it can be used, that money that we've been um, saving up for this uh, holy days, uh, we can buy whatever we want with it, even strong drink. It's not even just wine, but liquor. Let me go back up here to the strong drink. Shekhar, an intoxicant, intensely alcoholic liquor. So that's what shekhar means. So even if it's for strongly alcoholic beverage, God says if that's what you want, you can have it. Just during the holy days, though. And you're supposed to use it to rejoice. You know that I've been around uh, places of serve alcohol enough to know that when you get people to drink the beer or wine or even strong drinks, they get noisy. Yeah. They get loud. They get happy. 
<laughs> I mean, it numbs all the brain cells that would tell them otherwise, you know? And so they, they end up with this very liberal, joyous nature. And so God says, and you shall rejoice, you and your household. So God wants us to take this second tithe and get happy before him. It's real interesting because the word uh, happy, which he says you shall rejoice or you shall be happy in my festivals. He, what was God's name called when he first told Moses what his name was? I'd be happy, I'd be. Anoki, uh, Asher Anoki. I am what I am is what it's commonly translated. But uh, Asher is a Hebrew word that means joyful or happy. And so God says, I'd be happy, I'd be. Well, he wants us to be happy too. This is one of his commands right here in Deuteronomy chapter 14, and this is verse 26. So we need to get on with the being happy. We shouldn't let anything interfere in our happiness and our rejoicing. He even carries it further and says, uh, Shamach, Samach, is related to Sameach. Uh, after our service this evening, uh, we're going to have uh, Simchat Torah, same word. Simcha, uh, that's the word Sameach, to, to rejoice in the Torah. And so God wants us to rejoice before him in all of his commandments and everything that he tells us to do. It should be counted as a joyous thing. Is that better? Yeah. Yes, you okay. Know. Good. Good. Better. Good. Better. Most people see God's instructions, especially concerning tithing, to be really restrictive. That means that you can't have that money to use for anything except for what God said. But what does God say? He says you can use it for whatever you're desiring. Hmm. So that's not the hard ogre dictator that's going to tell you every little bite that you can take during his festivals? No. But it's, it's a thing that we are to become rejoiceful over and happy over. And he says he also wants us to be liberal with that money so that the rabbi is a little short on cash, folks, so give the rabbi some <laughs> funds or... Maybe Shane has had some hard times and he doesn't have as much as he would like to have or needs to have in order to have a really good time before the Lord. Well, we're supposed to kick in and help him with this money that was being commanded to be used for the festivals. So we just need to learn to be a more giving and loving people and learn that God loves us too. He's really interested in us being happy. And he's, he's given us the wherewithal to do that by instructing us to tithe. Save up your tithe and, and then eat it. <laughs> says you and your household. That means even your servants. The Levite that is within your gates, you shall not forsake him for, uh, because ain low, not unto him... Halek is a part or an inheritance. Mahala, uh, Emeka, with you. So the uh, Levite and the priesthood, as they're serving God there in your communities, you're supposed to share your abundance with them so that they can uh, have 
what they need to be able to rejoice as well. Uh, verse 28. At the end of three years, Shalosh Shanim, three years, Totsi, you shall bring forth. It's, there's the you at the beginning, so that since it's at the beginning, that tells us that it is going to happen. It hadn't happened yet, but it's going to happen. At the end of three years, you shall bring all the ma'asar, the tithe of your increase, uh, in the year, hahiv means in the same year, and hinachta, you shall lay it up bis arecha in your gates. Shore means gate. Okay, so if you are going to obey this command, then you are supposed to save it up the third year. The third year tithe. This is why this guy got confused because he saw the third year tithe. It's the third year of the year of tithing because they're taking out an extra third to give to widows and orphans and strangers and the Levites and people that need it. So, verse 29 and come, uh, Halevi, because the, the Levi, because Ain Lo, uh, Hale, Chelek. He has no inheritance or no part or inheritance, it says, with you. And uh, if you read the Torah, you know that the Levites did not get to inherit any of the land that they came in to possess. And so that's why they didn't have a way to raise funds unless, unless we give the tithes and offerings that God commands to them. Uh, and for the stranger and the fatherless and the widows, which are, let's see, which are within your gates, and they shall eat and be satisfied, and that's in the third year of tithing, where you're supplying them with food. Lama'an, so that means, so that the result will be, Yabarechka. Yahweh Elohecha, that Yahweh your God will bless you in all of your work, ma'ase, um, all that you do, um, yadika, of your hand, ashir ta'ase, uh, which you do. So he's going to give us blessings on everything that we do. So we can see then that all of God's instructions have a basic scheme behind them to instruct us to be happy. To be happy. And he even tells us that those who are Gentiles, if they will keep the Sabbath and show delight in the Sabbath, that he will accept their offerings on his altar, and that means they will receive blessings from God for their sacrifices. And he says, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's all I got time for. Uh, I'm going to shut this, this part of the teaching down. What do we need to do yet? Sound the shofar. Sound, sound the shofar. Yeah, because we completed Shemini Atzeret. Okay, and then what are we going to do after that? Rejoice! Well, we're going to rejoice in that. We're going to rejoice again. We're going to rejoice in the Torah. So we've yes. got a little ceremony that we're going to do, and we're going to rewind the Torah. And as we do, we're going to be rejoicing before God. We're having given us his commandments, which are a blessing for us. Hallelujah. Okay, you want to set this over there? And yes, uh, we do have the Kiddush ready and available. Um. And we got a long ways to go to rewind the Torah because it's at the very end. <laughs> are we going to do the Kiddush first and, or at the end? At the end. Okay. Y'all can be patient for just a little longer, can't you? You're going to need some <laughs> help. It's good uh, to see you again, Les. Can you mute your mic? Mute your mic. Maybe you can help me.
Tour service, please. Why do we have the white cover on the Torah? This is the holy days. This yes. Is one, this is the end of the year holy days. Your mic is unmuted. Expressing the righteousness. And we know that righteousness comes from Torah. Yes. Testing, one, two. Okay. I would like to get somebody. Andrew, would you come help me with uh, sure. bringing the Torah away from its resting place? Mm -hmm. Just where you keep a. You have a keeper? <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get the <coughs> Torah service, please. You need your, your page. He doesn't need to tell you. No. He doesn't. Oh, you don't need to tell no. you. I'll pull it to you. You can be seated and we'll undress it. And see, even the inside was white. Mm -hmm. What's the messy? Yeah. Clean the whole Torah, not Bring just the, the outside of the house, but the inside so too. Amen? <laughs> yeah. He okay. said, do you want them to see it, Rabbi, on camera? Sure. Yeah. You want to step aside a bit? We're going to do a little reading before we uh, rewind. Okay. Okay, so bring up the Torah service, please. Yes, I bring up the Torah service. Not yet. Okay, so if you can sit in the honored chair over here. Just, just try to take a picture of it. We're just coming back. Okay. Oh my God. There, there you go. She wants a picture. Okay. Can you rotate it a little bit towards her? There you are. <coughs> Did somebody turn off the no? monitor? There we go. There it is. Okay. Vayi ben Soharon, Vayomer Moshe, Kuma Adonai, Vayafutsu Oyavecha, Vayanusu Misanecha, Mipanecha, Ki Mition Tetze Torah. Ki mitzion tetze tohora Udavar Adonai Mi Yerushalayim Baruch Shenatai Why did you change off of the uh, primary melody? Because it, it goes higher. No, it doesn't. Not that high. <laughs> Baruch Shenatan Torah Torah Baruch Shanatan Torah Torah Leyamo Yisrael Bikdushato You heard the harmonies go up yes, and, I, I and was it confused so you. <laughs> I was so used to the, har yeah. the harmony before. Okay, now we will take the... Next slide, please. Shema. Wait, there was supposed to be Barhu. Oh, there are the gloves. Okay. Keep going back. Let's see, where were we? we no, no, no. Go back. Go back to the tour service, the beginning of the tour service, please. It looks like it froze. Okay. 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 Oh. Keep the next slide. Why did this get next stuck? Next slide. Who put next this slide. on here so hard? Oh, that. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Ooh. I can't get it off without breaking it. Somebody just okay. jammed it on there. Okay. Let's face east toward Yerushalayim for the Shema. Hold Shema. that handle down. Shema Yisrael I'm Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonainu Kadosh God Lula Adonai Ti Uneroma Shemo Yachtav Amen. 
something to protect it with? Kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Erechu Vechanu Erech Hapayin Berach Hese Ve'emet Nose Hese Lehafim Nose Avo Vafasha Vechata Amen. Do you want to use something to protect it with? Maybe we should try butter. And just, uh, oh, butter. yay. <laughs> oh. Wow. Wow. Okay, can one. Thank you, Lord. Baruch Hashem. <laughs> no damage either. It's been for a while, right? Hmm? It's been sitting for a while. It has been sitting for a while. Somehow something uh, knocked it down and wedged it on there. And that's happened before, but that used to be because somebody, somebody was twisting was, them down. As yeah. they were, and I told them, don't do that. We'll never get it off. That's how that <laughs> one got damaged. <laughs> What's that? The one on the left. This one? Yeah. No, I See got that? damage in shipping from Israel. Oh, okay. I didn't get it well packed enough. Oh. What's the next slide? Mm. Thank you, Lord, for helping me get it off. Yeah. This was handmade by one of our people. Wow. That's really good. Okay, let's see here, I don't really, don't really need to button this. Who should we call for the Aliyah? Okay, huh? Who should we call for the Aliyah? Don't worry about that right now. Okay. I gotta get this right. situated, okay? Why don't you lay it down here and uh, Rotate it as you do. Rotate it. There you go. And then. That's the Song of Moses. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and pick up the handles and slide it back towards you. It should be right there. Now let me find my place I need to be at. I need my Bible, please. Yes. There you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Hand, take this off my hands. There we go. Okay. Now I need to go to Deuteronomy. Uh, 
I don't know. Can somebody give me the last chapter of Genesis? Look in your Bible and tell me the last chapter. Genesis, not, uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't need the verse, just the chapter. 34. Okay. Vayal Moshe me arbat arvot. Yeah, I need to kind of scoot over here. Why is this doing this to me? Thank you. I'm going to just tear it on down until So there's only 12 verses in the last chapter. Yes. That would have helped to know that. Oh, well, sorry. So. Specific. Okay. Um, but yeah, all Moshe. Oh, there it is. Right there. Oh. Can I use your camera now? Mm hmm. Okay, this is the beginning of um, chapter 34, verse 1. Four, please. Deuteronomy 34, 1. Just. 
Vayal Moshe Me'arvat Moav El Har Anahu Rosh Hapizga that's to the top of the Rosh Hapizga Hashir Le'alpanei Yerchu Yerko Vayreyehu and he saw Yahweh et Kolha Eretz Hashir Haglad Do Lod Gilead. Uh, Art Yard No, no. until the end. Art Dan. Up until the end. But it calls me. But it. Art. Ephron. Ephron. It was, it was to the end, end of, end of uh, Ephraim, Ephraim and Manasseh, and but it called Eris Judah at Hayyan to the sea, ha Ephron, Ephron, but it called Negev to the south, but it called Kafar. Ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-ha-
because all these stretched out letters really made it hard to read. <laughs> Closing. Okay. Why don't blessing, you come please. back around and I'll help you hold it and we'll face it around to the congregation so they can do the Torah blessing. Okay. Hold it right there. And we're going to bring it up. Uh, next slide. Once you slide. get this in, I'll, get, I'll bring this end up and I'll walk around you. Around the table, actually. Next yeah. slide. Yeah. Bring it up. And I'll walk around the table. There we go. Oh, go back one. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natalana Torah Emet Vechaye Olanata Vedocheno Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. And we'll do Vezot HaTorah Vezot HaTorah Asher Shamoshe Lifnei b'nei Yisrael api Adonai b'yad Moshe. This is the Torah which was placed by Moses before the children of Israel from the mouth of Adonai in the hand of Moses. Amen. And now it's time for our joyous rewinding ceremony because before we close the evening out, we have to read the first part of uh, the first chapter of Genesis. Mm -hmm. So, I'll need help up here. Is that upside down? It is. <laughs> That's all right. We'll fix it when we get That's all right. We're just going to roll it that direction. <laughs> Actually, this is going to be off on. Yeah, so we're going to roll it that direction. And I'm going to need two more people up here. Okay. Les? Les, come help us. Well, well, everybody's going to get to
one, David. The ringing sound in the depths of the righteous song of the Lord. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. The Lord's right hand has lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things for us. We get up and move. The Lord's right hand is on high.
Hold it. Bring it back. Right to there. Okay. Right there. That's the end of it. We are going to. Okay, let's all gather around so we can eat. read from the uh, first Don't chapter do that. of Genesis. And I need the uh, pointer, wherever that went. There he is. Okay, we can bring out the tour cam, please. You need this is the end here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mrs. Spears, pick that up and just slide it towards you just a little. Mm -hmm. There you are. Yeah, well, he did it. He showed it too soon for, for me until I could set it. <laughs> Looks like it's upside down on your end. Here, I'll just make it. Okay, good. Okay. Boreshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim va et Haaretz va Haaretz va et Tohu va Bohu va Hoshech al Panei Haton va Yahweh is it va Yaro? It's not Yahweh. The Ruach. The Ruach Elohim Maharefet al Panei ha Hamayim, Vayomer Elohim, Yehi Or. Hallelujah. Vayyehi Or, Vayar Elohim, Et Haor, Kitov, Uvdel, Vayadel Elohim, Bain Haor, Ubain Hahoshek, Vayikra. Elohim Laor Yom Ha Yom Oh Yom Val La Val La Hoshek Kara Laila Vayahi Ere Vayahi Boker Yom Echad Amen Hallelujah And that means In the beginning or depends on how you look at it. It could be he created six, or it could be other things. But here it's, we'll call it the normal translation is, uh, in the beginning, created God the heavens and the earth. And the earth uh, was or became without uh, form and um, darkness. Hoshech was on the face of the deep. And the Ruach of God, Maharefet, which means to flutter like a hummingbird, <laughs> al Panei ha Hamayim. English. Uh, and the Spirit of the Lord fluttered on the face of the waters. Um, al Panei Hamayim. Uh, Vayomir Elohim Yehi Or, Vayehi Or. God said, be light, and light became. Mm -hmm. uh, and God saw the light, that it was good, kitov, vayivdel, and God divided uh, between the light and the darkness, vaykra, and he called the, uh, Elohim called the or, yom, and to the darkness he called Lila. And it was uh, evening and morning, Yom one, day one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come <laughs> <laughs> one. Amen. Now we will go ahead and roll it together. Roll your in a little bit together. And we will call that Tov. <laughs> Ze Tov. And I'm going to bring the original garments.
Okay, come and hold this end up while I Blessed bring this stuff on. You, oh Lord, our God, eternity's holy king. Blessed are you, oh Lord, our God, whose word okay. brings on the evening. But a word of night, I'm a bold I was going to redress it with the original. Okay. Good. And I need to take this back off. By wisdom, oh Lord, heaven's gates open up. With understanding, you order the season. Creating day and night. Turning darkness into light. Arranging the stars to your pleasing. Oh, we're not going to pass on that. That makes it too hard to open up. Okay. Okay. So, if we can bring it up, hold this just a second, I'll help you. Okay, bring it, your end up. Up, 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 up. Up, up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Keep going up. Right here. Right here. And now. You want to help get this over the top? Let's proceed with the Torah service. I need the liturgy, please. It's Chaim hi lama chasikim ba betomecha meushar derachecha darkelo am v'kovetivotecha shalom hashivan adon. Shamenu, 
it is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and those who support of it are praiseworthy. Its ways are ways and pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Bring us back, Lord, to you, and we shall come. Renew our days as of old. Amen. Amen. And this concludes our Simcha Torah celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can one? Good job. Thank you. <laughs> well, although this may be the conclusion, we still look forward for the next season. We're going to have a little yes. mosaic here. Yes. Mute the handheld. <laughs> <laughs>
host proceed with the ironic benediction? Yeah. <laughs> he keeps leaving in the middle. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Harmonic benediction, please. face to, upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord shine his countenance upon you and give you shalom. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, it's a delight that y'all are here with us again. And we will see y'all this coming Shabbat at 10 a.m. for our morning service, beginning with Bible's issues class, followed by our main service with more worship, liturgical service, which is also worship, let's not forget, yeah. <laughs> and teaching. Yeah. <laughs> We shall see you again in Shalom Shalom. Hinema to Bumanaim Shevetahim Gamyahad. Hinema to Bumanaim Shevetahim Gamyahad. Hinema to Shevetahim Gamyahad. Hinema to Shevetahim Gamyahad. He behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell to who gather. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell to who gather in unity, in unity. La 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 la. In unity, in unity. La 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 la. La 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 la. Hey! Shalom, everyone. We'll see you again.